In a bullshit attempt to contain the biological threat, the federal government locked down all access in and out of the city. And we were stuck in this cage with the psychos. Inside me, something was beginning. Scary as hell at first. You gotta understand, there was no one to talk to, no experts to consult. But with time, I'm learning to control it. Master it. Just hope it's not too late. So that's where the story of Infamous begins. So as you can see in the gameplay I'm showing right now, the city's in chaos and there's tons of criminals that are actually shooting at me as I'm jumping from building to building. And one of the things that's great about this game is you can practically climb on anything you see, windowsills, signs, anything that would normally jut out from a building or even like lampposts or anything like that, you can climb on it. Your character Cole was a part of the destruction of the city. He was carrying a device called the Ray Sphere. It's a bioelectronic device and whenever it exploded it knocked out a six block radius of the city and he was in the center of it. He was the only survivor and he gained these electric abilities. So as you begin to progress through the game you can begin to customize your character. I thought it was pretty interesting how they let you pick your abilities and basically as you go through the game whether you finish a mission or defeat enemies you get XP and you can go into a menu and use your XP almost as money and you purchase the abilities that you like so you can kind of customize your character to which abilities you like more than others and that leads right into the karma system that they've worked out in Infamous and as you can see on the screen the menu that I'm looking at right now on the left there's good and on the right there's evil so if you choose to be a hero throughout the game, you can choose from a different skill set than you can get if you become a villain. When new missions appear on your map, sometimes they will be paired and there will be a green one and a red one. And the green one is a good mission and the red one's the evil mission. So you have to make the choice. Do you want to save the city or do you want to help destroy it? The most interesting part of the karma system, I think, are the karmic choices that they give you throughout the game. The game will freeze and you'll hear Cole's thoughts about whether he wants to do a good action or an evil action. And actually I'll just show an example of what one of these is like. If I turn that valve, I'll take another blast of crud to the face. Probably screw me up, send me on another mind trip. Or maybe I force this guy to do it for me. Go turn that valve or I'll fry you like a piece of bacon. So that's basically what Infamous is about. You get to decide whether to be good or evil while completing missions and gaining new abilities and trying to escape the quarantine city. So for the rest of the review, I'm just going to go over things that I really liked and disliked about this game. Infamous has such a strong superhero theme. So being able to choose whether you want to be the hero or the villain I think really has a strong impact on how you interact in the game and the feelings that you have as you play it. And originally whenever I thought about playing this game at first, I had seen so many comparisons to Grand Theft Auto and how it's an open world and everything like that. And one of the things that really stood out to me about this game is that in Grand Theft Auto you couldn't really help the city. You know, you didn't really have a choice, you just went around and were destructive. And in this game, I think it added that other side, so that if you wanted to be a hero, you could. I'll make another reference to Grand Theft Auto, because I know so many people have played it. And I played about five hours of it, and I wasn't really too into it. It didn't hold my attention. And I was worried that whenever I started playing Infamous, it might be the same thing. But whenever I put it in, I was amazed at how much fun it was to be able to climb on the walls and grab every nook and cranny in this world and it was really impressive they did a very good job of it you could climb on light posts train tracks buildings walls whatever was sticking out you could grab onto it and i think it really added to the superhero type feel of this game there were so many things that they incorporated perfectly there were a lot of abilities that i won't go into but i really didn't expect them and it was so cool whenever i actually got them because it was something completely unexpected and it allowed me to interact with the world in a new way. 
one slight complaint that I have about this game is that some of the side missions were kind of boring. They, not very many of them, I'd say only probably 10% of them were a little bit boring and slow, but they made up for it in, they had major missions that you would need to complete to progress the story, and then they had side missions. And the side missions you didn't really have to complete at all. You could still go through to the main missions and progress through the game without hardly completing any of, this, any of the side missions. So, I played through a lot of the side missions, but the boring ones, you know, you can end up being able to skip, and you don't really have to waste your time on them. Another thing to, while I'm talking about the missions is a complaint that I've heard from a lot of people who haven't played it yet, and they think that it's going to be too repetitive. And I think a couple of the side missions got a little bit repetitive, but you could always skip them if you started getting bored or slow or anything like that. But I thought the main missions were really exciting. I, I really liked the storyline. And also they had the karma missions, which kind of kind of changed things up a little bit, where you could choose whether to be good or evil. And I think the ending of this game is its one of the best endings that I've seen in games recently. I really liked it a lot, and I think almost everyone else will too. I did find a few glitches in this game. There weren't very many, especially whenever it had to deal with being able to climb on things. Most of the time it wasn't an issue. You could, you could pretty much grab onto anything that you saw. But every now and then, I'd say it probably happened maybe like 5 to 10 times throughout the whole entire game. There'd be a ledge that I, w I would see and I just couldn't grab onto it. But, I mean, it wasn't really a big issue at all. And there were a couple other weird glitches, like once I just fell right through a building. It was like there was just a glitch in the floor. And I just fell straight down and I was running around on the inside of the building. Or like the glitch that I'm showing here, it was just the enemy was just bouncing around a little bit. And it was awkward, but... Overall, I'd say the game was really well put together, and it wasn't that much of an issue. Infamous took me about 15 hours to complete, and if you wanted to play both playthroughs, good and evil, and get all the trophies, it'd probably take you at least 40 to 50 hours. So I definitely think it's worth purchasing, although if you wanted to rent it, and you wanted to put enough time in, you probably could beat it in a single renting. So, but I still think it's worth the money to buy. I think Infamous is one of the better PS3 titles. The open world was a blast to explore, and if you like superheroes, I definitely think you should check this game out. I'm Dinky Dana, and that's my review for Infamous. I'm going to give this game a score of 9 out of 10. Check out my channel for other reviews, and thanks for watching.